Fireworks are used the world over to celebrate national and religious holidays, welcome in the new year, or even jazz up sporting events. From brilliant cascades of white to deep blues, reds, and purples, fireworks get their explosive colors thanks to two of my favorite topics, minerals and chemistry. <laughs> Here's how fireworks are able to achieve such colorful explosions. Now, one of my most vivid memories of high school chemistry class was when we learned all about the flame test. Small wooden dowels coated with various elements, each burned a different color, depending on which element was present. It's how many elements are detected. Lithium burns a bright red, calcium burns as orange, and so on. Firework colors operate on that same basic premise. Different elements burn as different colors. But first, here's a quick overview of how fireworks work. From the ground, the fuse is lit. Black powder comprised of potassium nitrate, sulfur, and charcoal explodes, propelling the shell into the air. All of the coloring agents, we'll go into them, are also packed with black powder into the small balls called stars. Fireworks also contain a time delay fuse, which will ensure the stars explode into glorious colors, but only after they're safely off the ground. How these colorants are packed and the timing of the explosions will determine what kind of shape the firework will have. The coloring agents in the stars are known as metal salts. Basically, a salt happens when an acid and a base neutralize one another and a new compound is formed where ionic bonds hold the elements together. A lot of the salts also include an oxidizer. The oxidizers, get this, provide oxygen, which allows fireworks to burn brightly. Oxidizers are also a stabilizer because it's pretty important to keep explosive things stable. So now we're in the air. And how are different colors formed? Red fireworks come from a mineral that's ironically blue, celestite. Celestite shares the same Latin root as the word celestial and is a reference to its heavenly blue color. Celestite is a very attractive mineral with some very cool properties. It fluoresces under UV light, and though soft and sensitive to pressure, geode specimens of celestite are prized by collectors. Celestite mostly comes from Mexico, and of course, even though it's blue, burns a bright red shade, perfect for fireworks. Moving down the rainbow color spectrum, orange fireworks are a combo of strontium and sodium. Strontium is often found in celestite, so you already know what color it's gonna burn, red. Sodium, the salt, burns yellow. And sodium nitrate, specifically, is what's used for yellow fireworks. Though it can be synthesized, natural sodium nitrate comes primarily from Chile, a type of sedimentary rock called caliche, basically a calcium carbonate cement, is filled with sodium nitrate. And next time you see a yellow firework, imagine the ocean. A great deal of the sodium nitrate found in caliche is due to buildup of deposits from marine fog and sea spray. After yellow comes green. Green fireworks are produced by barium, and most barium comes from mineral barite. Barite, though beautiful, is not a good mineral for fastening into gemstones. It's just too soft and brittle. And exposure to sunlight can cause the color to fade, pretty much the last thing you'd want in a colored gemstone. But even though it's not used decoratively, barite has loads of industrial uses, and of course in making green fireworks. Most of the barium used in the United States is mined in China. So it's not unlikely the green fireworks you see may have originated in China. But the next time you're at a 4th of July fireworks extravaganza, keep an eye out for the blue fireworks. They might just be the most American ones. Blue fireworks get their color from copper, and almost all of the copper used in the United States comes from Arizona, Michigan, Montana, New Mexico, or Utah. There are several minerals mined for native copper, and one of the bluest is azurite. Azure means blue, so you can see where the name comes from. Azurite has been known and prized for millennia, not necessarily as gemstones, but rather as beads and cabochons. And when azurite is found with malachite, a green copper mineral, we get azure malachite, each one unique. Azurite has also long been popular for its pigment. In the European Middle Ages, azurite was crushed to make a blue pigment for paints and clothing. Copper for blue fireworks is also found in chrysocolla and malachite. Chrysocolla, like azurite, is often blue, but in malachite, the copper's chemical composition presents as green. If we were talking about actual rainbows, here's where I'd break it down into indigo and violet. But in fireworks, we're really just talking about purple. And guess what? Just like your childhood paint set, it's pretty much a combination of red and blue. Purple fireworks are caused by the elements strontium and copper. Remember, copper burns blue, and strontium, just like in orange fireworks, adds that little bit of red. What about fireworks that burn white? For those in the 
sky, aluminum is the most common component. And for fireworks in your hand, a sparkler that could double as a magic wand for instance, iron fillings and charcoal fragments do the work to pop off those bright whites. Have you ever used the flame test to identify an element? Tell us all about your favorite chemistry experiments in the comments. And while you're down there, don't forget to like this video and subscribe to our channel. And if you'd like to learn more information on the minerals and topics we've discussed today, check out the links below. Thanks for watching.